Hi there, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California. And uh, I'm coming at you today with a little gear review of the, um, the Benro geared head. It's the GD3WH. And the reason for this was, um, I've been recommending people go with this head that's a cheaper alternative to the um, Arca Swiss D4 or the Manfrotto 405. And there are several other things to consider when choosing a geared head, but I don't happen to have the Manfrotto equivalent of this, which is the 405, well, the 410. It's funny, the 410 is not as good as the 405. You'd think it was opposite. Anyway, uh, I'd like to just start this off by saying welcome to the Rich Bomb YouTube channel tips and tricks for real estate photography, where we talk about getting better, uh, having better gear, having more support, shooting better, having faster shoot times, things like that. And I also like to thank b &H Photo for lending me this Benro head um, so I could do this review. If you're thinking about this head, use my affiliate link uh, in the show notes, and uh, that'll help me motivate me to make these free videos. So. I had the opportunity to shoot one home on this uh, geared head and I feel I have a pretty good feel for it and uh, I used the 405 for quite some time and uh, I am familiar with that and I've been using the Arca Swiss D4 for the last uh, two years and I'm very familiar with that so I can give you a good pros and cons and I used to also have a 410 Manfrotto and so I can give you a little feedback on that relating to this little boy uh, or girl anyway. So um, I just want to say first, I want to use a caveat. I firmly believe that all real estate photographers should spend the money, take the time. It might be a little extra time consuming at the beginning, but go with a geared head. And it's basically you go with a geared head because all of your motions are very precise and um, that's what we want in this game called real estate photography. So it's really about precision and it really is faster once you get into a geared head to move and do um, your minute uh, adjustments compared to a ball head. Trust me, I went back to a ball head last week in Mexico I had a shoot using a ball head I won't I'll be bringing my uh, d4 down to Mexico in the future but this is about the Benro so let me start off by saying the Benro is uh, I think it's well trusted now they're a good company they make tripods that are very well respected um, I think they're Chinese but you know what if you want to get more in-depth reviews on the uh, details of this I don't do that, but I can give you just an overall in my opinion and my feelings in general. So this is very much like the uh, Manfrotto 410, where it has uh, a, a knob so you can move it minutely, small movements, or an outer uh, inner knob, which is more for you turn it and you can move the whole, okay. This one, and actually it takes a little more than the other ones to, uh, to get moving. And it's a little tight because it's new, but you can move it um, in big increments. So let's just do the pan mode and that will move like that with the bigger knob or I can do small movements. Um, personally, I feel that like similar to the Manfrotto 410, it's a little sharp on my fingers, a uh, little bit of a strong tension on the um, on the spring so it's uh you know it's uh it is a give and a take i find that the manfrotto 405 is much easier feels better uh smoother a little more precise but this one's about 165 dollars i think um this is about 500 dollars, and this is about the way i have it set up with a um really right stuff uh, lever clamp, Arca Swiss lever clamp, it's about a thousand dollars. Maybe if you went out to go buy it, you might spend eleven $1 hundred. So 
These two are a little expensive for you if you're just getting into this, but I want to remind you and remind everybody, as far as tripods and heads, they are actually one of the few things in real estate photography or photography in general that are actually kind of investments because cameras will be go and come quickly. Lenses might last a little longer, but a good geared head should last you a long time. And a tripod like these, the uh, Manfrotto 3046s, you can see I have three of them just because I'm obsessive about these, uh, these tripods. But I always have my main one, my backup, and a little bit older one here in case I got it stolen, missing, or whatever. I couldn't function without my Manfrotto 3046, but this is not a video about that. So I would say that um, compared to the Manfrotto 410, I would go with this because it's a little cheaper, I think, a little less expensive. I guess some of you are saying 175 is not is not cheap, but in really in the reality of it, it is kind of uh, reasonably priced. Um, I will say that it did work very well for my needs for this shoot, um, though I can't compare it to the D4 roughly or remotely, and I can't compare it to the 405, but in regards to the uh, Manfrotto 410, I'd say this is the pick I would do. Uh, mainly because a lot of people have said they're having issues with their um, their 410s and they will break or they'll get loose and sloppy. And I have ne though I've never had a problem with it in my 405, I've never had a problem with this one or another 405. And my D4, I've never had issues with. I will say that I will trust people to say that there have been issues with the Manfrotto 410. And personally, I don't like dealing with Manfrotto, the company. Um, I've had to deal with them in the past, and eh, it's just a little less than desired. So let's get into this a little more. Okay, so we have our big movements with the knob, and again, the knob's a little sharp. I mean, I guess I'm picky, but I just it doesn't feel as nice as moving this and uh, moving this. So anyway, uh, but for the money, I think it's you know 165 is compared to 500 dollars. I think you're going to go with this if you're just getting into it, and it's not a bad choice. Okay, I will say that it fits, it's nice and small compared to the Manfrotto 405. I will agree. It's probably the same size as the Manfrotto 410, but I kind of like it. I like, uh, I like the blue anodized color, which means nothing, but it is very um, functional. It does its job. Um, one thing I will comment on though, it has a release. It has a two-way two release. Let me move this so you can see it. This is the release knob, and it fits an Arca Swiss compatible base, so um, plate. So it's a two-stop. So you unlock it, and it will not come out. It's a safety mechanism. And then you pull the release knob. You pull it and then continue opening, and then you can remove the plate. So I will say it was a little unusual for me to um, get used to this, but that's okay. I only used it on one shoot and I'm sure it's not a big deal and you would certainly use it in the future. I think that this will fit. Don't, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it will fit a uh, regular Arca Swiss L bracket, which is what I recommend. So we get this uh, plate that comes with it and I'm putting it in here. And actually they have these two little stops on the top and the bottom so it won't just fall out um, when you don't want it. So it's just a little weird to get in. Let me see if I can turn this towards you. Um, there we go. Move this here. It's just a little weird uh, getting it in there. It's just not fluid to me. But the safety might be worth it to some people. Um, again, I'm just like retarded with this. Oh, you know what it is? It's the screw on the plate that is sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to slide this in here and there it goes. It's in there and I'm going to tighten it up and it's good to go. So I really, really wouldn't let it worry you. I think you'll get used to the plate and you could also take off the two little stops. They have um, Allen wrench screws so you can um, not have to worry about that. Um, it does have bubble levels. 
Um, and I will add a caveat on that. And it's really important to have a bubble level. Uh, I have one on my Arca Swiss, um, uh, I mean, sorry, my Really Right Stuff um, lever clamp. It's right on 98% of the time. It, I, can, uh, I can look at this bubble level and go, my camera's level. I never need to look through the back of the camera or I never need to uh, look through the camera. I never need to, need to use the in-camera level. I use this bubble level and that's what I've been using for over 10 years. So I recommend that. And I also have one on my, um, on my Really Right Stuff lever clamp for this 405. Works perfectly for me. I found that relying on the bubble level was a little off on this. And um, I'm sure I could figure out how to make it so I could depend upon it. But it was a little bit of a, not a fail, but it's something I would definitely deal with. Uh, you may want to get another um, clamp. You could actually put this clamp on here and you'd have this clamp and it would work perfectly and be a much better clamp because this again, it's a little funky um, moving and getting on and getting off. Not enough to, to be a deal killer. So I might spend the extra $110 and get the really right stuff uh, lever clamp with the bubble level and that would make it great. And the great news is you can use these these clamps forever. I mean, I've had this clamp for 15 years and it has never gotten loose. It's been great. So I really recommend really right stuff. And it's 110 bucks to add on. So I might do that. And you know, it's really um, up to you. But I will say, I thought that this is a good way to get into geared heads. Um, I haven't heard anybody having problems with it breaking or coming loose. And uh, I really haven't spent the time to get into how I would tighten this up or how I would adjust it if something did happen to it. But it is a great option um, for you uh, for a geared head. It also has a uh, bubble level here, which uh, you might use if your camera was up higher. One thing I like about this Arca Swiss D4 is it's got a bubble level on the side and on this side. And when I am shooting, outdoors up high, I can see it there so I don't have to look down and see my bubble level there. Anyway, um, you know, I think it's a great alternative. I'm not blown away by it, but I think it is definitely on the market. But then again, I'm used to using a $1,000 or $500 head, uh, geared head. And this is a $165, $169, something like that. I, I'm not sure of the going price right now. But I think it's a viable option for you, the uh, real estate photographer, or, I mean, I use these in many reasons, many, many things. I don't use them. Sometimes I use a ball head. Sometimes I don't use a head at all. But I think this is a really good option um, as a geared head alternative to getting into geared heads. So I would say the um, Benro, it's, the plate is the PU70, the, um, the head itself, is the, um, oh boy, I said it a minute ago. Wait, where is it? Here it is. It is the uh, GD3WH, and I would say it's a, uh, you know, maybe a, a seven out of 10 uh, in general. And I think that you can't go wrong getting it. And I feel good because I've, I've suggested it to several people um, without trying it, and now I've tried it. So I will give you an educated, uh, seven out of ten. I'll give it a one thumbs up. You know, this one I'll give a two and a half thumbs up, and this one I'll give a two thumbs up. And again, I've never had any problems with my 405 coming loose or sloppy. So I'm fortunate. I, I really realize the importance in my tripod, my head, and my plate or my L bracket. And uh, I really, it's really important to me. So I'm giving you a thumbs up on the Benro. Um, the Benro geared head. So go out, please subscribe to the Rich Baum YouTube channel. Please um, use my BNH affiliate link. Thank you again, BNH, for letting me use this so I could bring an educated and hopefully a helpful um, review on this. Again, I think if you want something more in depth or technicals about weight and limits and things like that, you can find dozens and dozens of videos on YouTube. But my things are just overall, just what works for me. So Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Rich Bound Photography's Tips and Tricks for Real Estate Photography YouTube channel. 
get out there, subscribe, hit that bell so you'll get all my new videos. And uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, I want you to also check out shootingspacespodcast.com where we do Brian Berkowitz from New York and I put on a um, weekly um, podcast, usually weekly podcast where we talk to great people. We do uh, insightful interviews and uh, all kinds of fun things. So uh, check it out. And uh, thank you so much. Shoot better, shoot smarter, get better clients, get more money, enjoy more with your family. And uh, if you're looking at this right now, we're all in the midst of the co- the um, I just want to say the um, coronavirus and the scare and, and really we'll make it through it and maybe it's not the best time to be buying a, a geared head but it will come back and we're going to be bigger and stronger than ever. Thanks a lot. Rich Baum signing off.